Hello, this is Keith Larson, editor of Control Magazine and ControlGlobal.com. Welcome to this Solution Spotlight episode of our Control Amplified podcast, sponsored today by Honeywell Process Solutions. With me today is Dr. Patrick Robinson, team lead for process controls and modeling at the Phillips 66 Bayway Refinery in Linden, New Jersey. Welcome, Patrick. It's a real pleasure to talk with you today. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Keith. Happy to be here. Yeah, I understand Bayway was already in the midst of a multi-year migration of your legacy Honeywell DCSs to the latest Experian virtualized environment when the pandemic hit. Um, that sort of all-encompassing migration is a challenge in the best of times, much less in the midst of travel and social distancing restrictions imposed by the pandemic. Can you give our listeners a sense of the scope of the migration project and how you've managed to really forge ahead in this uh, time of adversity? Uh, yes, of course, Keith. Uh, so Phillips 66, the refinery up here in London, New Jersey, uh, it is a multi-year control system migration I like to call journey. Uh, our facility is operating, you know, 365 days a year, seven days a week, continuously running. And we're processing about 300,000 barrels a day of crude, making products like gasoline, ultra low sulfur diesel, jet fuel, a plastics plant on site as well. And this con distributed control system is the backbone, the brains of our facility. And not only do we have to migrate it on process because of the down, uh, you know, trying to limit downtimes, like you said, these these COVID conditions kind of put a hamper in it, right? So our system is a uh, legacy coaxial cable LCN UCN system. We're going to be going to the latest, and we're going to the latest Experian virtualized environment. Uh, so this coaxial cable is not going to be supported after 2023, 2024. And you know, with the new control system, you know, we're leveraging not just you know, the virtual environment, the, we'll talk about the, you know, remote factory acceptance test with there, but we're actually, you know, leveraging big beefy servers, virtualizing our, our equipment, virtualizing nodes, minimizing, or trying to, you know, think forward and really minimize the maintenance going forward for our system. So, you know, our system has been running and really reliable for the past 20, 30 years mm -hmm. and converting it to something that could last another 20 or 30 years, that's the ultimate goal, right? You wanna, you wanna get there. So when the pandemic struck, uh, you, you know, social distancing and, and travel restrictions, uh, we still needed to progress the project, right? We, had a, we have a tight timeline to, to work against and we've leveraged at first the open virtual uh, engineering platform, OpenVP uh, from Honeywell, where we've put our system out up in the cloud uh, and utilize that system to develop graphics and have a interface that you can test and look at graphics, which is your human machine interfaces that the operations interacts with online. So we were doing that pre pandemic, um, but we utilize that throughout the pandemic. And then we went one step further and did a remote factory acceptance test where we had a Honeywell employee in, in the factory. And then we were remote working with them, you know, them having helmet cams, uh, screen sharing, and you know, doing the tests remotely. Yeah, I imagine you did uh, a lot of the software work uh, even before that, before you had the hardware in place in, in a more virtualized environment. Yeah, so uh, the software, like we were saying, using the open uh, virtual environments, up in the cloud, doing all that testing, uh, all those checks, um, really lends itself to doing it remotely. Uh, so mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff we were doing pre-pandemic, it kind of just did it tenfold once pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, to me, uh, you know, the, this pandemic, you know, 2020, unfortunate times, you know, we want to make sure, you know, Honeywell and Phillips 66 and everyone wants to keep their employees not just safe, but healthy. You're using technology now, leveraging technology to, to continue, you know, progress on this project. So mm -hmm. we kind of, we kind of tenfold. I said, why not? Let's, but, you know, we've been doing these things remotely. Why not go further? Why not try new things? And what, what do we have to lose at this point? And, and we're leveraging now things that we can continue going forward. Uh, cost savings on both sides, both both on the customer, you know, Philip 66, and the vendor itself, too. Really well. yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that factor acceptance test? Um, how did that really compare the, the process to uh, a traditional one, what, what we're all used to, where you, you get all the both the teams together and some hardware somewhere and put all the all the software and stuff and 
Kiss, kiss sure, your family goodbye good. for six weeks and uh, go off and do, do the process. Yeah, so, so instead of being trapped literally in a factory for those weeks, right, and physically touching the hardware, it is different, but you're doing all the same tasks. So Honeywell had an engineer at the facility with a helmet cam and give, gave us live feed of what they're looking at. Um, so when you go through procedures, pull wires, see all those tests, you get to not only see the screen itself that you know your system is based off of, but you can actually see what's happening in the factory. Now, you know, I don't want to say it's not too much different because once you get on site, we added more steps and checkoffs and checks once the hardware got here on site. So it's a little given, right? You know, you're not going to be there physically touch it. You know, what happens if you do this? What happens if you do that? You stick to the procedure, you you know, you have what we use in the oil and gas industry, repeat back, right? Like we repeat back, constant communication. And outside of not being there and physically, not physically being able to physically touch it, we were able to accomplish everything we could in the factory. It's, you know, going through all, all the procedures, the test outs, the checkouts, screen sharing, verifying, and then we do the final sign off once the equipment actually gets here on site. So you're gonna, you know, bit more time and conserve like a, a little bit more contingency in the front end of your site acceptance test where mm -hmm. for a acceptance test you can get 80 to 90 percent of that material complete flawlessly with remote services and I will say you know Honeywell really stepped up to the plate for the factory acceptance test they had cameras on the floor cameras you know attached to them to their helmets on, on the actual factory the engineers at the site uh, were fantastic at the factory and one thing that you can leverage now with remote work, you can have experts all around the globe, right? So for folks doing advanced solution packages, um, specialty things, any type of a, a custom specifically for a site, you can pull those experts that won't necessarily be there in the factory, but be there while you're going through the procedure and while you're going through all the checks and balances at the factory. So it is a little bit different. Um, I, I will say I, I won't, you can 100% get there, but you can do a lot of it. And I think, especially on the software side, I can, you know, I, I can comfortably say if all, if not most, can get there. And hardware, yeah, you really just got to be smart, have checks and balances when the hardware gets on site to make sure that everything you did test is actually physically there. And uh, the vendor, you know, did a great job uh, allowing us to actually, you know, feel like we were there, but virtually. Any particular... Um challenges you could warn or other listeners about before undertaking things to, to watch out for that uh, maybe you, you didn't expect um, challenge wise yeah I think the the vendor and us we were exceptionally prepared coming in because we knew we prepared ourselves we knew this was going to be new um, something that you know the, you know the industry hasn't done yet at least for these types of uh, on process migrations and testing and new hardware so we had a lot of preparation going in, mm -hmm. um, but I think number one thing, the biggest challenge, and it, it goes to any project, is communication. And when you're virtually and doing remote, you know, uh, desktop sharing, camera, live feed sharing, communication is that that much more important. So that, you know, our business, I, I have a saying, our business requires 100.0% accuracy, because that 0.1% that's not accurate uh, can really cause something really bad to happen. Mm -hmm. And when you're Testing things out, testing hardware out in a factory, you know, you've got that mindset coming in and it almost gets up to 100.00% when you're doing it virtually because you have to be that much more prepared, that that can, that much more communication between the two. And, you know, that that that's the expectation I set for my team. That's the expectation I set for the vendors that we work with, including Honeywell. Any surprisingly beneficial aspects of, of doing this virtually that uh, maybe you didn't expect? I think the biggest uh, surprise was not only, uh, and probably the the biggest benefit was the uh, maybe drawing a parallel to my personal life. You know, with COVID, uh, my folks, you know, the, the way they see their grandchild mostly is through FaceTime or conferencing, right? So right. Um, there's a lot of hand, like you know, face to face time. But I will say the folks, and my, my parents have never used it pre-pandemic, so you've got a lot of people who you know are hesitant to utilize technology because they're not used to it or they're or or it's not something they've done before or they're not um you know there's a hurdle there. there's it's something different and uh my my silver lining at least with the pandemic and this project was 
you know, we're doing things that we haven't done before. We're progressing the project, keeping it on schedule and on budget. And we've got people now that want to leverage this technology and say, okay, well, you know, I spent weeks away from my family traveling for this factory acceptance test. You know, instead of saying, what, what can we do remotely? It should be questioned, you know, what can't we do remotely? And that's kind of the challenge I put on my team and myself of, you know, prove to me why we have to travel. And that's the mindset this pandemic had put on us. But I think it's something that is a fair question. And I do really enjoy, you know, people adopting technology, you know, in the controls world, us controls folks, I think we've been doing digital transformation before digital transformation was a buzzword. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, you know, it was our time to shine in this pandemic where the silver lining is just the adaptation of technology, the acceptance of it, uh, the acceptance of all these virtual events, the virtual conferences, the virtual factor acceptance tests to kind of put put it in uh, overdrive in terms of speed of adoption. So um, that's what I'm pleasantly surprised for in the management, like the management acceptance uh, of it and support of it. They want to see this system succeed. They want to see this system, you know, progress, the project to progress. And they were super supportive of us doing something a little different, a little bit outside the box and, you know, proving them with the checks and balances that we've had. Um, you know, since that remote uh, factory acceptance test, we've had a site acceptance test and we've physically cut over all that hardware that we, we test in the factory virtually. So it's all proven out. Uh, we've had a success rate all on process migration and uh, super proud of the team. Both, uh, both on you know my team at Phillips 66 and our partners in Honeywell uh, implementing this. Right. Sounds like you uh, you had just uh, cut over some of that stuff early this morning. Yes. Yes, uh, 3:30 this morning. Uh, right. um, so about two and a half hours ago, I, I I came in and we're physically on all that experience, all those months of work and years of work and preparation. You know, for that you know that one that that one day of cutting over. I think. Uh, my favorite stories is when we did our first uh, LCN cut over to, uh, you know, fault tolerant Ethernet uh, virtual servers. And, you know, the Honeywell team and the Phillips 66 team on the control side had a little golf clap. And all you heard was like, clap, 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 clap. Like it was this great camaraderie <laughs> moment where like this months of uh, yeah. almost blood tears all, all, all cut over. And great. it's such a great feeling. But yes, today uh, we did just cut over the, the, the equipment that we did virtually factory acceptance tests on. Well, great. Congratulations. Glad to see you're still Thank smiling. You. Can't have gone too wrong. Yes, yes absolutely. So, so it sounds so like so far so good. So it sounds like this new methodology is something that was very positive for Philip 66 and a uh, methodology you will likely continue using um, when when you don't have to. Let's put it that way. Yeah, we were we were able to keep our team safe while maintaining schedule like this these coaxial cable systems aren't manufactured new anymore the support is going away so staying on schedule for the cutover is important but the most important thing is keeping our folks safe mm -hmm. and healthy especially with everything that's going on in this world and yeah it, it really proved you know locally corporately that these things are feasible and it, and where else could you leverage it right that's you know, I think the controls world leveraged it first, but remote factory acceptance tests, I mean, we, the, those could be the wave of the future um, in terms of uh, receiving equipment before it comes on site. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly makes sense that uh, by decoupling the hardware and software, you've got some real opportunities to do that much. You know, that's that's the wave of the future and the architecture of the future. Yep. Yeah, the, yeah not just the, you know, human machine interfaces, but the second you start virtualizing your environments and your control systems, uh, all those checks and balances become, you know, emulated hardware. So it's software based and you can go through all those checks and balances. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The, the hardware that you do put on site, you've got to do some double checks when it gets here. Um, but it is well worth it. Um, to tr and it's something we're going to leverage going forward. I, I don't think we need to, with the open virtual env uh, engineering platform, open VEP for graphics, um, that is a seamless process for us. And we're going to be doing that uh, remotely going forward for all graphics. And, uh, you know, the virtual factory acceptance test, we're going to be leveraging that, those abilities going forward. So, well, great. Well, thanks so much for uh, sharing your insights and, and your experience. It's always very, very meaningful to to hear some of these things that we 
we hear about <laughs> really being experienced and, and reaping benefits for, for the end user community. So congratulations on that. Thanks for sharing. And for those of you that are listening, thanks for tuning in. Thanks also to Honeywell Process Solutions for sponsoring this episode. I'm Keith Larson, and you've been listening to a Control Amplified podcast here with uh, Patrick Robinson of Phillips 66 Bay Wave Refinery in Linden. Thanks for joining us. And if you've enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe at the iTunes Store and at Google Podcasts. Plus, you can find the full archive of past episodes at controlglobal.com. Signing off until next time. And thanks again, uh, Patrick, for, for, for joining us today. Amazing opportunity. Great work, Keith. Appreciate it. Keep it up. Take care. You too.